Hey everyone, it's Time Spiraled. Welcome back to some more MSCM content here on the channel. We've got ourselves a fan game lined up for you today. We've got Ricky against Hammer and Nail. Uh, this is a league match, I repeat. This is not a Grand Prix Round 2 match. Uh, right now, the GP matches, I don't believe anyone's playing tonight. I think they're playing tomorrow night, so maybe we'll get some content there. But for today, we've got a lovely little league match. I was actually fortunate enough to catch Ricky playing this deck on the uh, previous match, but I haven't seen what Hammer and Nail has brought in. And already looking at the cards I'm seeing up there, boy, there's going to be some really interesting stuff. So, as usual, let's do a quick overview of the hands. We've got a Desolate Path, uh, untapped, enters, brings out a Glow Spore Grove, which is going to create a blue elemental. Other cards that we have in hand are cards like Slapfield Workgate, which can produce a lot of tokens, and Rescue Enchantments, which is great for Glow Spore Grove. Cards like Butterfly Rebellion is the big payoff here, giving your permanence with mana value one or less, first strike, haste, and lifelink. And Condor Clearings will generate a lot of tokens. And, um, well, if you manage to get enough of them, they're going to start making the opponent sacrifice creatures or discard cards. Over on Hammer and Nail side, we've got a Transplanted Citadel just being run out. Uh, it turns into a 6-6 Golem Artifact creature, but only if you control like a bunch of artifacts or you have the mana to spend. Well, looking at the hand, there's going to be a lot of artifacts. So, we've got Stonework Infantry. Um, it's a Mirror Servitor. Uh, it's just differently typed and has slightly different art. So, that's, that's pretty much all there is to it. Uh, if it dies and you manage to get some other ones out, it will just keep bringing back all the other ones. A Paradist is a really interesting shapeshifter creature. You have to pick a non-human creature type, which is a nice little limit here. And uh, it becomes the chosen type, and then one in a tap, you put a counter on each creature you control of the chosen type. So it'll grow Construct. So this seems to be a construct typal deck, considering that we have Shining Crusader here in hand, which has protection from all colors as long as you control no colored permanence, and the other Stonework and a Paradist. We also have Gilded Spyglass, which is really nice to see. Uh, it costs two, you can pay two and tap, and you can look at the top five cards of your library and grab colorless cards from among them. So, really cool card from uh, Discoveries of Akieva. So, Ricky's turn has been going uh, pretty well here. Um, we were able to, I believe, run out uh, Condor Clearing, Slatfield Wordgate is also, so the board's just slowly growing. Uh, the Butterfly Rebellion, however, is still in hand, so uh, things haven't gotten really big yet, but having this big board here is definitely nice. Uh, Aparatus is going to activate to put a counter on the Stoneworks, but um, I believe this one doesn't have haste yet, so just the two. Yeah, so this Stonework Inventory is going to swing in. We played out a Time Worn Crags, which also costs one less for each non basic land you don't control, and uh, Ricky already controls three. So, I mean, this could activate pretty quickly. Butterfly Rebellion is going to come out. Because of the triggers, uh, you're going to get another Condor. You're going to get another Ox, which is great because they have First Strike, Haste, and Lifelink. So you can just, you know, freely swing in, gaining the life. Thankfully, it doesn't give, you know, Vigilance. That would be a lot. But that was three creatures that hit. So that player is going to have to sacrifice a creature. And if they can't, they're going to have to discard a card. Hammer and Nail goes like, oof, uh, that's a lot of damage there. And, uh... I'm going to certainly be on the back foot. I can't really deal with the flyers, and uh, the sacrifice part is going to quickly shred the board. So we're moving to sideboards. Uh, reminder, as a league game, I do not have access to player sideboards, so we're going to have to go in blind on this one. Uh, there was already a planner. What did we have over on Ricky's side? I believe it was a planner eviction. So uh, this is an enchantment where you can pay just regular three and it functions as an Oblivion Ring, or I mean a, a Banishing Light, but it's got Primal, White Exile, a creature you control. Uh, you can cast it for a much cheaper cost and by exiling a creature you control, only if you haven't played a land. So kind of a steep cost, but you know, if you have a lot of tokens to spend, why not? Do I see anything in hands that might be sideboarded? Maybe Glistening Chalice was in the sideboard, but it could also just be in the main board to make all your artifact spells cost one less. I'm going to have to assume Bind the Great Evil is a sideboard card here. As an extra removal. By being on the play here, Hammer and Nail gets to go a little earlier and drop a pretty early Glistening Chalice. And they're either going to be able to make non-artifact spells cost one more, or uh, make the artifact spells cost one less. So I'm tempted to say this is a sideboard card, uh, just making sure that all of Ricky's cards are going to cost a little more, because none of them are artifacts, and most of yours are. So 
we've seen Transplanted Citadel, we've seen Time Worn Crags. Uh, we haven't seen Hall of Random Access Memories yet, uh, which lets you get back artifacts, instants, or sorcery cards from your graveyard to your hand if you sacrifice one. Very fun card. So three lands out here. Uh, I'm assuming it's going to be... Okay, so we've got Protean Jar, and it looks like we went with artifacts, cost one less. Protean Jar enters, you pick a creature, it's going to be Construct. Each creature you control of the chosen type will now enter with an additional plus one plus one counter on it. And if Protean Jar isn't a creature, it becomes a copy of target creature you control of the chosen type but it still keeps Protean Jar's other abilities. So uh, it's quite neat, and it's not a uh, until end of turn. So Clockwork Gaucho is going to come out for one, enters with a plus one plus one counter on it, then enters, obviously, uh, with an additional plus one plus one counter on it. Your other artifact creatures you control get plus one plus one for each plus one plus one counter on it, and it can tap to put a counter on it. So already starting at two is really nice. All right. That's actually really cool. Um, we didn't have anything else to follow, though. This is not a artifact, so it was not affected by the Glistening Chalice. Living Library is not a card that I see very often. It's a 2-2 haste that whenever it attacks, you can draw a card if you do discard a card. But it is a construct, so if you're building a construct typal deck, maybe it's the kind of card you want to fit in. Feels to me like maybe we would have some better picks, but maybe just having a haste attacker that can loot is what you want. So... Uh, I mean, it is going to be a lot bigger with Clockwork Gaucho and some of the other cards. So, yeah, maybe it's better than it looks here. Uh, it's just nice to see cards that don't see a lot of play uh, getting a shot here. I'm sure it's a designer. Uh, Queen Emily is, would be happy to see Living Library being given a chance. We've got Bind the Great Evil here, though, coming out for Ricky because Condor Clearings and Slatfield Workgate are uh, both already on the field. This is on Cast Trigger. This is on Enter Trigger. The board's starting to grow a little bit, and when it enters... Uh, you put a quest counter on it as it enters, so you'll exile a non-land permanent in opponent controls until one of your creatures you control leaves the battlefield. Uh, and then whenever a creature you control enters, it'll slowly progress uh, up the quest. So it'll be scry one, scry one, and then uh, the rest. Unfortunately, Emeronale says, hey, okay, uh, that gaucho is going to come back as a 0-0, zero, zero, and uh, that's enough for me. So we're going to wrap up there. Um, a quick 2-0, Ricky's deck is doing really well. Um, some early concedes, but maybe if you feel like knowing what you've got in your hand, you're not going to be able to undo the advantage that the Condor Clearings and the uh, Slapfield Wargate are going to do. It's not necessarily incorrect to concede and say, hey, uh, it's going to be a tough fight and I don't think I can get through it and I'd rather just cut my losses early. So thanks a lot for catching in and uh, hopefully you can see some of our other content coming up soon. Uh, do make sure to check out our Grand Prix playlist. We've got videos from lots of other content creators putting up stuff for the GP, even though I haven't been able to catch quite as many matches as I would have liked. So with that, take care and have a good one.